Hello and welcome back. Okay, so I've got this nice little circuit coming along which gives me two sources of clock. So you've got the single step manual version and then I can switch to the automatic clock. I've also got the reset circuit. But what I really want is I want three modes here. I want a single step clock, a visual speed clock like this one, but I also want a third one which will be as fast as I can make the, the processor work at. What I want to do today is work out how I'm going to introduce a third mode here because it's not as easy as you might think to just add it to the set reset latch. Let's start off by adding the button. Okay, so now I've got the two states and I want a third state. So let's uh, have a quick discussion about how this currently works and then look at how we can add this third mode. Okay, so the two button version is implemented with a simple SR latch using a pair of NAND gates. So you've got the two button inputs and then the two outputs. Normally the SR latch with NAND gates is talked about as an active low and the switches are indeed active low but normally we'd be taking the opposite outputs but to drive the LEDs it's easier for, it to, uh, for us to take the uh, immediate outputs and treat them as active high because switching between two states you can, uh, you can read it either way. I initially thought well maybe there's a simple way to do this with free NAND gates but I thought about that for a while and realized it wasn't going to work so we need to think this through. So I started to look at one half of this, dealing with one input and one output. So the, this is a sub-circuit, we've got two inputs. The first input is the switch, and the second input is the state output of the AVA component. So I think it's worth us thinking of the free state version as being free circuits with appropriate interconnections. So let's think about what a single component would be. So we've got a circuit with unknown contents, we've got the switch input, we've got an output, and then we're going to have as an input to this module the two outputs from the other two states. So this looks a little bit like the SR latch with the NANDs, but it's more complex because we've got one extra subunit and then each of the units has three inputs instead of two. So this is going to be the outline of what we have, but now we need to think about what the logic inside here is going to be. So thinking of any logical circuit, first thing that I normally do is uh, suss out what the truth table of it is going to be. So the obvious way to do this is with active low switch, which is what I've currently got, and then make the output active high. So let's fill in the truth table for this. In each of these first four entries, the switch is low, so active, and so this is us pushing the button. We want this particular submodule to be selected in this case, so the output needs to be 1. Okay, so in this next case, the switch isn't pushed, but both of the other modules are not outputting anything, so we must be the selected section. Then in the next two cases, one of the other two modules is enabled, so we're definitely not selected. Now this last situation is a little bit degenerate because this is suggesting that both of the other two sections are selected. Of course this might happen momentarily when it's changing but in either case if something else is selected we really shouldn't be. So I'm going to treat that as a zero. Okay so I sat down and tried to work out the logical diagram for that and I came up with this. So this is an OR gate, a NOR gate and an inverter. Now the inverter is on the switch input, so we could get rid of this inverter if we changed our switch from active low to active high, but I don't want to do that because I did have a reason for making it active low, which we'll get to in the future. But the benefit of building our own circuit is we can redefine anything, so I did take a look at the active high output and thought what would happen if I made that active low. The switch is still active low, so in this case we still want to be selected, but now the output is active low, so we want a zero to be here. 
Now in this case, both of these being zero, is zero means that the other module connected to this input is selected. So this is the degenerate case. So we treat this the same as we did before. So we'll output the one, but I'm flagging that as uh, we don't really expect that to happen. Okay, so in the next two states, we've got the B and then the C input representing a selected. So we want to not be selected. And then in the final case, neither of the others are selected. So we want to be outputting that we're selected. Okay, I can immediately see here that if A is a zero, the output is zero, low. And so we can easily add that on by whatever we need to implement this, we just AND it with A. So in this case, this is quite a simple truth table here, two inputs, one output, and this matches a NAND. So here's our diagram now. And so that's what I'd like to implement. And we already have a NAND chip in the build, but I need to add an AND gate chip. And that will be a 74LS08. Okay, so here is four AND gates. I've got the four NAND gates already. Only need three of each, but uh, yeah, need to make some room. Almost forgot the power and ground for this. The A select line. There's the AND gates added and it's still working. Okay, the outputs from our new circuit are active low, not active high. So this resistor array is not going to cut it anymore. The outputs won't be here either. And this configuration's wrong. Actually going to be easier if we turn the AND gates and the NAND gates around. So we want the third button to come to that input. So the AND gates and the NAND gates are in exactly the same positions, relatively speaking, on the chips. We're not really restricted on where we put these things anymore, so put the final output clock on the right over here. That makes more sense. Still going to need a long wire to take it back to the reset circuit there. Right, so I need three active low LEDs. I'm going to have to turn this one around or I won't hit the end of it. From the AND gates, the final state outputs can come over here and drive the LEDs. So that's the first one, second one, third one. Each of those, each of these outputs needs to be one of the inputs to the other two stages. So this is stage one. It's going to be an input into stage two and stage three. Stage two will be an input into stage three and stage one. And stage three will be an input into stage one and stage two. And the outputs from the NAND gates go to the currently unused input. Oh, nice. That works. So I've got my three modes and three buttons to select them. Okay, so now it gets interesting because I need to drive that back into the selector. So the selector has four inputs, of which we only need three, and it's got two address lines to select that. Right, so if we treat this as a binary number, this is 
stage one, two, three. And so this is currently zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero. Okay, I can see a way of doing this. If we ignore this final LED and just treat these two as the binary address. So in state one, we've got a zero and a one. So it's our first input. State two, so one and a zero, so it's a two. It's in the line that's drawing the second output. Okay, so these are the opposite way around because that is the least significant bit, not the most. And then the next line is going to be selected if both these lines are high. That's whatever's coming in from this wire. That piece of circuitry doesn't exist yet. Okay, well that looks pretty good. It's working. Happy I was able to reason through this circuit. I have made this whole breadboard a lot less neat than it was. This looks more like a David Watts breadboard now. Let's see if I can clean this up. It does occur to me that this input here should come via the latch. So whatever logic we need to we end up with to replace this underutilized latch chip needs to deal with two lines. I'm doubling out all of these outputs to this side. I could actually take them from a closer location. So those two are both coming from the same place. Okay, I found it quite interesting using the AND and NAND gates to work out a circuit for the free position latch. The next video in this sub-series is going to be the extra clock that goes in here. Hope you found this interesting, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.